Welcome to Young Tuition. Let's continue discussing climate physics related issues today. According to the popular explanation for global warming, the increasing man made CO2 in the atmosphere is the main reason because it's absorbed the surface infrared radiation. But exactly how much infrared radiation can be absorbed by a carbon dioxide gas? Here are your multiple choice 30%, 16%, or under 12%. To answer this basic question, one needs to use infrared spectroscopy, namely both the absorption and emission spectra detected experimentally. To my surprise, the first observation of such infrared absorption and emission spectra were published by Robbins and uh, Ashikinas as early as 1898, together with the infrared absorption spectra by water vapor as shown here. To enable you to see the details, I have redraw the original spectra with coloring. The pink single narrow peak is due to CO2 absorption, whilst the blue colored area represents the water vapor absorption. The spectral overlapping is obvious. By reading the original paper, I realized that the two spectra were separately measured and the relative concentrations were not specified. Understandable. This is understandable. In those days, the instrument was almost as simple as the that used by Isaac Newton. By comparing the earliest spectra with the current graphical illustration of the atmospherical window, it is clear that the proportion of the CO2 absorption near 15 micron is noticeably exaggerated by today's climate scientists. To make this point clear, let's discuss some fundamental physics in relation to the infrared spectroscopy. When a gas is uh, uniformly excited by a radiation source, resonance absorption could occur if one or more intervals of the energy levels match the photon energy. Here, the main transition wavelengths associated with molecular vibration and rotation are calculated by using this energy level diagram. Based on similar model, computer simulated absorption spectra of CO2 at different concentrations are shown here. Also shown in this figure is a related experimental spectra published by Martin and Barker in 1932. Notice that the CO2 absorption bandwidth is between 13.9 and 16.2 micron or closer to two micron. It is important to understand that each resonance absorption peak is usually simulated by using a Lorentzian nine shape function with infinity tails on the both sides. That is why the absorption bandwidth could be arbitrarily increased as shown in this case, where the bandwidth seems beyond 11 to 20 micron, which implies that uh, CO2 could absorb more than it could. However, this is completely wrong in accordance with the basic spectroscopical principle because the bandwidth is defined as the half width at the half height in the same manner as how standard deviation in normal distribution is defined. In general, the infrared radiation by the Earth's surface at its global mean temperature, 289 Kelvin, is non-uniformly distributed as described by this Planck function. 
In essence, the area under the Planck function curve represents the total infrared radiation by the surface, whilst the proportion of the CO2 absorption should be less than the area of this tiny rectangle whose base is the bandwidth. In history, the first estimate of the proportion of the infrared absorption by CO2 in the atmosphere had been first made by Cleus Armstrong in 1900. Based on his own empirical formula for thermal radiation distribution, as Planck had not published his blackbody radiation theory yet. Here is a graph used by Armstrong Jr. Notice that two CO2 absorption bands at 4.3 micron and 15 micron respectively were taken into account. According to this paper by Armstrong, quote, under no circumstances should carbon dioxide absorb more than 16% of the terrestrial radiation. Now let's use Desmos to rediscover his result. Here are the related mathematical expressions and parameters to be used. Both the Armstrong function and the Planck functions are used. As you can see, the two distribution functions are extremely similar, especially toward the short wavelengths. To calculate the upper limit of the proportion, it is assumed that the width of the CO2 absorption peaks, both at 15 micron and 4.7 micron, is 2 micron, as I discussed earlier. To be specific, the two proportions are obtained by integrating the distribution function. Here is the most important result. The calculated proportion is closer to 12% by using either the Armstrong function or the Planck function. So the actual proportion of the CO2 could be less than 10% instead of 30%. It is unfortunate that the original research work by Armstrong Jr. has been almost eliminated from the textbooks, whilst the unfounded percentages, 30%, over two times higher than real percentages, has been deliberately and repeatedly used in mass media and the recent climate researchers. That is why this CSIRO officer had no idea about Armstrong's work when he was questioned by Senator Roberts. The, back in 1896, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere for basic physical reasons will trap heat. So you've got the carbon dioxide, you've got the physics that says carbon dioxide will trap heat coming off the ground, being radiated from the surface and from the water as well. It should be pointed out that this proportion could be even noticeably lower if the absorption of water vapor and clouds is taken into account. On the other hand, it is unlikely the absorbed radiation by CO2 can be immediately and completely re-emitted without keeping the atmosphere in thermal equilibrium with the surface in the first place, as I and other physicists have found. I will discuss this issue in the future. Well, it is now clear CO2 can absorb no more than 12% of the upward surface radiation instead of 30% as what you have been told. That is why the surface temperature is almost independent of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere as shown in this observation. Please subscribe and make comments. Thank you for viewing. See you next time.